I got this thing, the 16 inch MacBook Pro M1, a thousand and thirty six days ago. Here are some photos from when I first purchased it on the 22nd of November 2021, less than a month after it was released, I was one of the very first in my country, South Africa, to get a MacBook Pro. So if you're wondering how this thing has fared up for over a thousand days, almost every single day of use for work, personal gaming, editing, etc. If you're wondering if this thing is still even worth it to use, if you should maybe consider buying it because of the price, then this video is for you. I'm excited to review this absolute animal of a machine and share some thoughts and even other people's thoughts. How long do you think a laptop or a computer should last in a reasonably optimum state, be it condition, battery, uh, and just general use, like it's still it's still good to use. At least between five to seven years is what I'm looking for. Five to seven years? I would say between five and seven years. Anywhere from five to, to eight years. Probably about five years. That, that's the time frame for me to get enough money to upgrade my laptop and kind of use it as much as I want to. Nice. So the general consensus was about five to seven years that a laptop should last. This laptop is already three years old and I want to show you the general condition that it's in. There are minor scuff marks, and that really is my own negligence. There were some cases where I'd be carrying the laptop and I'd bump into the side of a door or a wall. Seriously speaking, everything is in perfect condition. Your keyboard still works as beautifully and as normally as day one. The trackpad is as beautifully and normal. The screen is still beautiful. I do take good care. I, I sweep it every day with a little brush. But yeah, the keyboard and everything else exterior wise is almost in perfect condition. Another thing that is important to me is the actual screen, the display. Now at full brightness, this thing delivers a great amount of brightness. There's only a few cases where I've been outside in bright sun where I felt like the screen could be a bit brighter. But generally speaking, I've got two lights on me right now. The curtains are open and the screen is purely bright enough. Also, when you plug it in, it tends to add a bit of brightness as well. So it's great in terms of brightness and it's running the ProMotion, which is Apple's 120 Hertz Liquid Retina XDR display. That's a bit of a tongue twister. What this means is that the screen just looks great. Now, another feature and arguably one of the most important when considering a laptop is the battery life. Apple has a pretty good wrap around battery life, but three years of everyday use, how does it fare up on a laptop like this? But first, let's hear what our people have to say. Out of 10, how important is the battery life of a laptop to you? Five out of 10, because if it has to be plugged in, mm -hmm. that's fine for me. I might give a bit of a biased use, but all day, every day. Like, the PC does not run out of battery. I get a nine. Nine out of 10. Very important, but for this thing. You're gonna want something that's gonna be able to last you the whole day and that you can charge quickly. But after three years, how does this thing still perform? And my cycle count for all of you who pay attention to that is 362. I actually don't really know what 362 means because this thing discharges and recharges almost every day. So it can't be how many days you've used it. So I don't exactly know what that means, but after 362 cycle counts, we're at 86%. But what does 86% after three years actually mean in terms of how long this thing still lasts me? I've been using this laptop for about two hours now, screen recording different YouTube videos, having tabs open, uh, disc Discord's open, I've got multiple Google Chrome tabs open. So there's a lot of usage of this computer. It's not like I'm just idling it. And we're at 82% after two hours. So we can equate that to about 10% an hour. That's about 10 hours that I still get from this laptop when using it quite a bit. What I do find amazing is when I close the screen, it goes into a power saving sleep mode. I can put this thing to sleep at 100% no power, the next morning I'll wake it up and it'll still be 100%. So when you buy this laptop, it comes equipped with a 140 watt MagSafe charger. Let me show you the general condition of this. This is the 140 watt MagSafe. You can see there's a bit of dirt that I could clean off. The cable, which is braided, is in perfect condition, unlike some iPhone cables that Apple makes. In addition, I mean, the 140 watts gives you about from zero to 100% charge in an hour and 30. And after three years, it is still the same. It is insane that just the rate at which it charges, which is different to the USB type C, because I know there was less power being able to be distributed into the computer. So that's another reason I really like the MagSafe. But on that point with USB type C, there are three USB type C ports on this computer. There's one aux input. There's obviously the MagSafe import. You've got your HDMI input and you've got your SD card reader. This laptop distributes a lot of power out of its USB-C port. So my iPhone charges just about as fast as if I was to use a wall charger um, when comparing it to how quickly it charges on the laptop. 
the USB-C ports can be used as power input. So let's say you forgot your MagSafe and somebody has a USB-C to USB-C or anything to USB-C, plug it into your laptop and that's gonna go ahead and charge your laptop for you and you don't actually need that MagSafe. Maybe you don't wanna travel with such a bulky thing. Just get a cable and a little dongle and that's gonna go ahead and charge you up. And lastly, on the topic of battery, something else I find incredible is this laptop delivers the same speed and performance whether or not I have the MagSafe plugged in. So even if I'm on battery power, I still get that juicy, super, super, super speed. Which leads me to the next point. The reason a lot of you are here, the actual performance after three years, does this laptop still fare up? We all know when it came out, it was revolutionary over the Intel chips. How does it do? And before we get to that, what is most important when considering a laptop? Yeah. Storage, without having to have extra storage. First CPU, second case RAM, third case GPU. I would say probably the memory, um, just because that indicates kind of how much I can do on my laptop performance, usability. So I think we can all say that memory or your RAM was a big topic, but the underlying thing that I gathered from asking these questions was that performance is the big one. When you're considering buying a laptop, you don't want something that is slow. You need something that's able to handle everything that you're doing. And we talked to and you heard from programmers, editors, gamers, people who do a lot of paperwork and admin and general use of the laptop. How does this thing do? What is the performance like? After three years, I totally didn't realize when I got this, how much of a beast this was. And as it stands right now on macOS Sonoma 14.6.1, this machine is an absolute beast. This next one is super important to me, but let's hear what other people have to say. Out of 10, how important is keyboard comfortability to you? 10, 10 out of 10? Yeah, it's not something I generally look out for, but probably, I mean, it still needs to be usable. That does not really matter. I, I use external keyboards. Not them. So a wide array of mixed opinions on how important a keyboard is to different people. I want to know from you guys, how important is the general comfortability of a keyboard? For me, it is a 10 out of 10. Maybe not 10, like I wouldn't put off a great laptop because it has a bad keyboard, but having a great keyboard just goes all the more and it's, it's all the better. It's a better experience. And this laptop, like I said in the intro, after three years, there is not one single scuff mark on this keyboard. And really it is one of the most comfortable keyboards I've, I've really ever felt for a laptop. All right, now the trackpad. If you haven't used one of these MacBook trackpads or you haven't seen it, honestly, it really is amazing. There's other things and functions on the keyboard with Mac, four fingers dragged into the center. You can obviously scroll down using two fingers. And there's just so much amazing functionality to the keyboard that leads to its greatness. So a big thing for me in videography and transferring hundreds of gigabytes of data almost daily is transfer speeds, right? So here's a quick test that I did. 28 gigabyte file took about five minutes to transfer off the SD card directly onto the computer. So let me preface by saying that that's actually not the computer's fault. A quick disk speed test shows you that this laptop has an insanely quick read and write speed. One of the, I mean, what five gigabit read speed on this laptop, which is absolutely insane. And there we go, the write is now at 3.5. So if you're transferring from an SSD onto the computer, you're gonna get a lot quicker transfer speeds. The worst thing is just waiting and waiting and waiting after a shoot and the client's waiting and you're waiting and everybody's waiting for this footage to transfer you so you can make sure it was all right. So having a super quick laptop is a perk. Also to put it into perspective, this is the SanDisk 2 terabyte extreme portable SSD. This thing reads and writes at about one gigabyte a second, about four times slower than the internal speed of the Mac. And this is an expensive SSD. That just shows you how quick this thing actually is. So the webcam, you're running a 1080p webcam and it's all right. If I just go to FaceTime here, you'll see as I'm recording this, it's applied a blur. And you can see, I mean, I've obviously got lights on and I'm in the studio, it's, it's all right. It's not something that you're necessarily gonna film a YouTube video if you want it to look really professional, but for calls, for Zoom calls, for Teams, it actually looks pretty good and pretty decent. The actual microphone of this computer is insane. We're gonna switch over to the computer's microphone and not this one, and you can hear it's not bad at all. I've actually used this thing sometimes when my camera microphone dies or my, my wireless microphone dies. I've used this computer microphone for these YouTube videos to compensate for that loss. And it's really, really good. When I'm on Discord, I just use the computer microphone, plug in some headphones, and honestly, it is great. So in brief, that's how it's doing after three years of general use. Let's talk more about some of the hardware and some of the things that are inside of this and lead to ultimately how does this thing still perform? Now it's one thing for me to say that this laptop is quick, but I did a quick test for you 
inside of DaVinci Resolve where I compared a Windows PC with this Mac. Now bear in mind the Windows PC had these specs. The CPU was an i7-9700K, the GPU was a GTX 1088 gigabyte, it had 48 gigs of RAM, DDR4, and a ton of HDD storage and some SSD space as well. Now this is a base model, 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabytes storage, M1 Pro laptop, three years old, and it completely destroyed his PC in the DaVinci Resolve test. Now we ran a timeline with fusion effects, uh, transitions, fully color graded footage, some titles as well, uh, some intensive transitions, like I said, no proxies, full playback quality, and this laptop handled it like a breeze. Now there were some little moments where it struggled, but his PC was barely able to play it back. And this computer, this Mac, did absolutely amazing in DaVinci Resolve. So, can see like it's 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 beefy she's got some speed now i generally use final cut and cap cut to edit on this machine and both of those are an absolute dream and i rarely have any problems with performance and my general editing workflow and seamlessness while editing honestly this thing feels really really superior to a lot of windows laptops that i felt that feel plasticky now this is a heavy this is a solid machine i mean it really is heavy and when you compare it to a macbook air like you feel that difference but I've never really struggled when traveling, putting it in a bag, putting it on my back. It's, it's not, I mean, it's noticeably heavy, but it's not like something that you're gonna really struggle with. Now, lastly, I know some of us may be gamers. I can honestly say the only game I've played on this Mac is League of Legends, and that I ran at about half video quality, so right in the middle at about medium settings. I got consistently 120 frames per second. I know there's games that are a lot more intensive than League of Legends, and I think that's where you're gonna struggle. If you wanna experience the game for its full quality, you are going to struggle on this machine. It just wasn't built for gaming. It's kind of weird because it, it is a beast in every other aspect, but when it comes to gaming, I don't know why, but I feel like Apple in general struggles a bit on their computers. So if you haven't been able to tell already, and just for some concluding thoughts, I absolutely love this machine just as much and maybe even more than when I got it three years ago. And that's because it just hasn't let me down. There's no day where this thing isn't performing well in whatever task I throw at it, from daily use to Google Chrome tabs, to editing photos, to editing video. Uh, I know some of you are programmers. It really is gonna be able to handle anything you throw at it. The only reason I would consider getting a new one for my editor or for myself is just the RAM. I would maybe get a bit more RAM, uh, but otherwise this thing is absolutely incredible in terms of its performance and I really, really do love it and it's in great condition.